Hi. God knows how this is going to go. All right. Uh, so I wanted to start by thanking the last cow guys, and I really appreciate coming out here. I've, I have personally tried for the last three years to come out over and over again, and the world hates me, which I'm sure you'll see by my total disdain when I talk. Um, but it does. It hates me in a lot of ways. And every time I try and come out, there's some type of fire, or somebody died, or I mean, it's just it's been crazy. So I'm like really, really blessed that I could finally come out and hang out here. Um, I want to thank you guys for sitting around and being wicked attentive and, you know, really enjoying it um, because it'll be boring. Uh, you know, when, when you get asked to do a keynote on stuff, you always got to think, like, am I going to go do a tech talk and then that's just going to fit into the slot? Am I going to talk about something kind of on the outside and hope that I can inspire you to do something? And, you know, I'm just more honored to be here so that I get to hang out and talk with you guys, right? And for me, when I give talks, I don't really like talking at you. So you can hoot and yell and do whatever the hell you want. I'm good with that, OK? So finally, I'm here. Whee! I'm Chris. That's me in a bunch of formats. Um, man, oh, I even have a laser on this thing. Ah, that was hilarious. That was Nancy Reagan's slipper. Um, and I was goateeing Nancy Reagan. Um, my credentials. There's nothing on that slide. Doesn't really matter. I'm just somebody talking. OK, that's how most people think of me. Pain in the ass. I've been around for a while. I just tell lies for a living. You know, people call me bad words. Uh, and I'm kind of bitter. But I'm still in my job because I love it, or just because I want to make my house payment. Um, my give a fuck meter is <laughs> it's currently broken. Um, so by the way, I want to make this kind of informal. So if I swear and that offends people, know that I'm not doing, I just, I'm from the East Coast. Right? Like, that's just how I grew up. It's not, I'm really not that poorly educated. I mean, I'm poorly educated, but I'm not that poorly educated that I have to use to compensate for things. I just use it because it's part of my vernacular. All right, I work for a company called Lara's. We do application assessment, code review stuff. Um, we do some incident response stuff here and there. Uh, you know, we go for risk assessments. We've done fun, you know, things on the physical security side of the house. By the way, anybody ever seen Hacker Strip? Yeah. yeah? Anybody else who hasn't seen Hacker Strip, like you're doing it wrong. Go find it. Please, fund it. It's awesome. Comic books about what we do is a way to reach a larger audience outside of this room where all of us bitch and cry together, right? Like, I'd rather have other people bitch and cry with us and be like, oh, it's not that bad. You know, like, yesterday somebody died on my job site. Be like, yesterday I couldn't get into a machine. You know, like, <laughs> like we need a little context in our life and it'd be really helpful. Uh, we do pen testing. <laughs> you know, uh, we do some red teaming. We do all sorts of other stuff. Yeah, I love me, whatever. Does any of the stuff that I do matter? I don't know, probably not. OK, on the same page. So where do we start with all of this? What am I going to actually talk about, opposed to just showing meme slides? Nothing. I'm going to just show meme slides. So when I, when I started thinking about what I was going to present, I had a whole presentation made. Mr. Robert Hansen over here Sorry. is a prick. <laughs> okay. And he posted something that made me connect to kind of how I felt about my job. And it made me ask a lot of questions to myself about my job, which turned made me ask a lot of questions about all of these talks that I've given around what the hell do they mean and where are we at? Why am I still giving some of the same talks? Why are people giving the same talks? And what does that mean about our industry? So I wanted to kind of start with where we are today, right? Like how did we get to the spot that we're in? So we're in Austin, right? Yeah. <laughs> but in order to really figure out like where we're at conference-wise and the people who are sitting here experience-wise, we need to kind of know where we came from, right? So quick history of how we got here, at least in my opinion. First, anybody know what that is? 1623, it's called the Pascalin. It's the first computer we had. 
We've been doing this for a long time, the whole computering. Like, I don't even computer good. <laughs> We've been doing this for a wicked long time, right? Then, then what? We had other adding machines, right? We had an Enigma. We didn't even know what it was. It was an Enigma, right? So we were doing cryptography. We had these great computers, right? So this is the precursor to the god of all computers, which was Enoch. Anybody know what Enoch is? Right? One of the, one of the first computers that has ever been built. Right? And this is way before we had transistors and stuff, and IBM came into the game to take over the world and be big evil. And then we made transistors, right? And from there, AT&T Labs developed those more. You know, we used to put wood blocks on things because it used to cool it. How cool is that? <laughs> you know, the whole halt and catch fire thing was real because there was wood in it. <laughs> that was a real thing, right? And then we started speculating, okay, what's going to happen with these computer things, right? What, what is a computer? Well, this is, this is a computer. It's a typewriter. <laughs> but that's a computer. You could bet your sweet telex operator it is. Okay. You know, and then, then we figured out we could do word processing and actually have stuff on the screen. And then from there, we got these things called modems. How cool is that? We could start talking to other people. Then we got hard drives. We could start storing data that we were creating on these cool typewriters. Right? Okay, well then what? Oh, well, I can go chat with my family. Wait a second. You mean, instead of just taking forever to download the porn, I could talk about it? <laughs> I want a computer, right? And then, instead of this point-to-point -point piece that we had, we got this thing called email, right? The UDP of all communication, <laughs> right? I could just send something out and bang, I got an email. You know, I don't even know what it is, but it's at my desk, right? And then Apple came into the game, right? And they made all these things easy for people and a little bit creepy, <laughs> right? But, but really, they made it prettier, and, and, and we became a lot stronger, right? We became totally addicted to this interaction that we have, interaction with machines, interaction with other people, interaction with this thing that we called the Internet, right? Now, the Internet started off by just being like a little point-to-point -point network for you know, the government and universities to share information, figure out how we could like bomb people better. And, you know, what we could do to get place, you know, information from one place to another so we didn't have to hire these huge trucks, which, you know, I'll, I'll take some credit for the worst thing I've ever done in my life by breaking an RFC. And I don't think I can get, can I get sued for breaking an RFC or something? All right, anybody a lawyer? Anybody know good lawyers? Because I might need one after this. Um, but, we had these boxes and we couldn't get information places. So when I was at Sprint, um, we had to transfer a couple terabytes somewhere, which back then was a really, really big deal. So we had to hire all these big trucks to go move data tape somewhere and drive them down to Texas from Kansas City. And instead, uh, because I had control of an edge router, I just routed 10 dot over the internet and it worked great. Yeah, you can do that if you own the edge. Um, wasn't necessarily good, but what we went to is we started having all of these types of networks getting more and more connected, right? Because people were sick of having to truck their data places. And then from there, we started getting all these neat bulletin boards. And from bulletin boards, we started to get chat services and make it available to the mass populace, right? So now you didn't even have to be as nerdy. You could just roll up on the Prodigy and then bam, you were interwebbing, right? You were on the magic internet. And you got there, and it was so cool, <laughs> right? It was so awesome. You could just internet all over the place and find all this data. And then there are search engines that came up, and search engines were so awesome because now, instead of having to find the stuff yourself and logging into all of these computers, which you may or may not have had access to, but it told you how to get access usually, now you had somebody who searched all that for you so you could get right to the data that you want. Like, how cool is that? We went from a wood block that did nothing more than punch a key and output a piece of paper to like being able to find data anywhere, right? Trying to obsolete the library by creating such an information sharing piece and it totally took off, right? We went into the web from web 1.0 to web 2.0 to web whatever the hell O we are now, right? Still the internet. 
We started using all these social media things so that we could interact with people real time, all the time, every time. You know, I need to know when somebody pooped. I have to know it. <laughs> you know, and if you're too busy doing other things like playing a racing game on your phone while you're pooping, then your toilet can tweet to me and tell me that you just used it. <laughs> you know, like, if, if you're taking off your bra, I, there's, a, there's a Twitter app for that. That's crazy, right? And then we started showing everybody our identity, which was even crazier. Now we went from sharing information to sharing with people directly to like, screw it, I just want everybody to know who I am. <laughs> right? I don't care where you're from. It's like those restaurants where you have like, it's, it's Jim's world's famous chicken. Like really, can I talk to somebody in Bangalore and they'll be like, oh, you went to Jim's? <laughs> no. It's not world famous, but we're becoming world famous. We push our identity everywhere just so that we can be world famous, right? And then it gets worse. We just start puking our information everywhere we can, right? Our information is absolutely everywhere. We allow people like Google and Yahoo and Microsoft and God knows wherever else to be like the psychedelic Jesus of our existence, right? They get to see everything everywhere, every time. They get to control your existence, but for the small, small price of you being the product. You are now the product. Nothing is free. If it is free, you are not the consumer, you are the product, right? You're the thing that people sell. And really, they're just big janitors, right? All they're doing is kind of cleaning up the shit so that we can expose ourselves to other people. <laughs> so we're left with this issue, right? We're left with kind of being the homeless people because we wanted to be homeless, because we wanted to be everywhere all at the same time. But then something else happened. At the same time all that was going on, we made these big bounds in what we were doing, and other people came up with, wait a second, so that's what it does, right? That's what this internet and computer thing does, but what can it do? Like, what, what does it have the ability to do? And so, you know, ninjas pop up. And these, the idea of a hacker comes together, right? Now, the idea from a hacker comes together comes from MIT. But even further back than that, I mean, Lady Lovelace, Lady Ada, right? One of the first programmers that ever existed. Now, I don't care, man, woman, child, really awesome, butt piece, whatever else. I mean, that's, that's, a hundred plus years ago, people were doing programming to try and get ready for where we're at today. So, all right, well, just like everything that gets created, there's a good and bad, right? We have to have the yin yang of the world. So, there's people that as this is, be, that is being created, there's people trying to break it, trying to see what else it can do. You know that hacking and exploitation literally goes all the way back to the Enigma and all the way back before that to Enoch? Like, that's crazy to think that we've been doing this stuff for this long and knowing that these things occur, yet we're at where we're at today. Right? We have this O-Day, right? That's what O-Day is. O-Day is not, oh, I found another cross-site scripting that nobody else has on Yahoo. That's not O-Day. O-Day is finding something that has never been found. If you tell me that there's another buffer overflow in the product, that is not O-Day. Buffer overflows, been identified before. Got it. You're just applying it to another application. That is not zero day, right? So back then, collaboration was a cool thing. It was cool because there was other people, because it was such a small community of people who used, you know, people who computered. So when people would computer, they would computer together and they would learn things, and it was really great. And these societies started coming together, right? People started sharing some of this information together, and it was so awesome. And once the sharing started, and you had the ability to connect to each other, the shit hit the fan totally. <laughs> I mean, it hit the fan. We started having conferences like CCC, where we could get together in a room together and all talk and share what we were doing. This wasn't talking at people. This was a whole bunch of people who computered and I computer and I'm like, cool, I'm gonna show you this neat computery thing that I did and everybody's like, woo! 
we could take that and do something else. And you know, three days later, there was products made, there was scripts all over the place, there was people building new operating systems because the stuff they wanted to do couldn't even be done yet. But they were like, but we could do it, right? We started making our own gangs because, hey, why not? The human existence requires us to compete with people. We can't just accept, you know, oh yeah, they're as good as me, I'm as good as them. No, 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 no. My click's cooler than your click, right? You have all of these different people that start putting it out. And, and the best part is a lot of these groups started putting out things that were available to the public. Why? Because they wanted their gang to be bigger. They wanted other people to understand and get enrolled in this cool thing that they're doing, not just allowing the computer to do what it was supposed to do, but what can it do? What are the other things it can do, right? We have these awesome groups that were sitting out there, hanging out together every single day, just going, what else can we make it do? You have an idea? Awesome. Let's all get together and figure out how we can make that thing happen, right? We love to share. I mean, we love to share so much that my whole life of coming into computers and coming into the internet and security and everything else was really built on me trying to get into porn sites because they were sharing and they didn't always share the log on. <laughs> so we moved from some of that and then we realized, okay, look, not everybody in this world has the financial means or ability or the lock picking skills to get to a computer. So we went back and started making some of these periodicals. Right? All right, if you don't have a computer, you can still read about it. If you don't have internet access, you can still read about it and learn about it, and we can get you there. Today, that's totally different. We went as far as having manifestos. Anybody remember this? Hacker's Handbook? There was a manifesto. What other group of, I mean, I don't think the Crips have a manifesto. <laughs> I mean, they might. I'm just, that's my non crypt knowing. Part of, I don't know, I don't even know what that means. But the manifesto was pretty clear. My crime is that of curiosity. I am a hacker, and this is my manifesto. You may stop this individual, but you can't stop us all. That's something real interesting to think about in the terms of today, not talking about hacker from the negative connotation that the news has built for us. But just in somebody who's curious, you can't stop my curiosity. Now granted, we all can't dress up like a monkey and wear a yellow coat and you know, do all those other things and be curious, George, but at the very least, we can continue to evolve our curiosity. We can get together and have camp, right? Anybody ever been to like CCC camp? No? And tour camp, yeah. And hackers on a plane and all, right? There's, there's, there's times where you can go spend a whole week. I mean, I know that sucks. Like, not all of us smell real good. Some people, like, hygiene's an issue, but that's okay. It's because they were working, you know. We, we, we got so good at sharing information while all this interneting and computering was going on that we even threw funerals when stuff died, right? Do you, anybody know how DEF CON got started? How and why? Because PlatinumNet was going down and everybody wanted to get together and be like, damn, how are we going to talk now? How cool is that? Now it's like the biggest freaking hacking conference on earth, and it was because we were just kind of throwing a funeral for things going away. Because we needed that interaction, because we wanted to keep sharing. All right, that's my tangent of where we're at. What I really wanted to talk about was why all this is going on now. Why, why are we so lost, in my opinion, in our industry as a whole? I think one was how glamorized some of the stuff has been getting, right? It's cool to hack into something. All right. I don't know what's cool about that, but sure. I mean, whatever. If it gets you chicks or guys or whatever you want, go for it. Money. Money's a big problem always, right? Money fuels you to do some things that you may not want to do. And then you get attached to it and you're like, wait a second, I'm making 100 grand here. I need to make 150 grand because I want to buy a boat. Well, now that I bought my boat, my boat breaks down all the time, and I need to make 200 grand to even keep the boat running. All of you have had a boat. You know what's up. <laughs> well, so-and-so drives a really cool car. Well, I want one of those cars. I can do that. 
So now I'm going to continue to force myself into this thing. And, and we get so worried about this market that's out there and the attachment to this market and the industry space that exists around it that we've polarized ourselves. We have people who are in it for the money. We have people who are in it for the lulls. Those people aren't in it for the lulls. They're in it for self-edification. They're in it so that somebody could pay notice to them. Right? They just want to hear someone say their name. That's why they're in it. That's not, most people who do it to laugh about it, laugh about it to themselves and move on. They don't publish it everywhere. Right? The vanity of that is what exists. We have people who are doing it on the defense side and on the offense side. Right? Agreed? Yes? No? We have defense and offense? Agreed. Agree? But we all came from the same place. So how is their defense and offense? How, is, how are we this against each other? Right? Th this is how I feel every time I think about our industry, right? <laughs> every single time I'm like, what happened? We went from really, really digging each other and really being interested in what the other person's saying to like, well, I'm bigger than them. So forget them and their ideas. And that, that kills me because we went from this, I love collaboration and I love sharing information to people to this. This is our motto now. And I hate that. It hurts me. And I'm not saying that this is our motto between everybody in the room. I'm saying this is our motto as an industry. That's why a lot of people from outside of our industry don't come to our conferences. Right? They're afraid of us. They think that we've polarized so much that they can't even talk to us. I mean, have any of you guys ever had that issue where it's like, oh, you know, you're kind of too technical. We need to put the sales guy on the phone to translate. Yeah? I mean, th that's a big problem. And, and I want to figure out in, in everything that I was going to talk about and all this other talk that I was going to do, and I was like, oh, I can make this cool talk about AppSec. And I'm not an AppSec guy, but I was going to make a talk about, which I had pretty much done, about how, oh, well, you know, you can do collateralized damage with stuff, and I can go and I can see everybody, which this is all public-ish knowledge. Like if you use Taleo, which is one of the biggest uh, job site engines on earth, right, to like hire people to get resumes and stuff. You know Taleo requires you to only use Flash 10? You can't go past that, otherwise it doesn't work. So then, you know, I was going to talk about, oh, here's how you could list out all the sites, find what sites people are using, find out those site requirements, send them exploits that you know that'll work because, hey, AppSec's awesome. But I couldn't do it because Robert made that damn post. Piece of shit. <laughs> and so I'm like, all right, now I have to talk about how I feel about the industry and where the hell we're going to go. So what do we do? I mean, do, am I just ranting? Am I just a bitter person? Or like, do you guys see any of these things? Do you see that our industry fights itself instead of moving forward and we're so busy fighting ourselves that we're forgetting our goals? Do any of you guys see that? Yeah? Yeah. yeah? yeah. Word. I need to hear people say yeah because sometimes I don't believe it. Sometimes I believe people just don't see this and I'm the asshole in the room who's yelling about it and they're like, dude, just shut up. Show me another <laughs> fucking cat picture. <laughs> Like, it's easier to listen to that than your bullshit. All right. So ways that we can fix it and go through it. Because if you're going to give a talk, you have to have call to actions, right? That's the PowerPoint book that I read. Oh, I didn't read it. I'm lying. All right. My first problem is offensive security versus defensive security. OK? I have trouble with things sometimes because I'm not real smart. I didn't go to college well. I, I don't even computer good. I'm like kind of not that quick. But I, I use the dictionary a lot when I can't figure things out. And I couldn't figure out why offensive security and defensive security were different. Can't figure it out. So I go into the dictionary. Offensive. Calling someone to feel deeply hurt, upset, or angry. Granted, some people in our industry, that's their goal. <laughs> If that is your goal, at least be clear about your intentions. Like, I don't need to hear you trolling somebody for the sake of trolling and then having someone else listen to that conversation that's not in our industry and being like, why should I ever listen to a security person? All they do is bitch at each other. 
You know, that's why we don't get a lot of traction, because we bitch at each other so much that our reputation is horrible. And you know that our reputation is horrible. Why? Because there aren't a whole lot of jobs at every single company having security people because they don't think we provide value. Why? Because we're too busy bitching at people instead of making things go forward. So offensive, OK. Actively aggressive attacking. Really? Anybody an actively aggressive attacker? Oh, now you're not going to say it, but before, if I was giving a hacking talk, you'd be like, hell yeah, I attack hard. I throw down. Oh, now it's different? An attacking military campaign. OK. I'll accept that one. Sure. But are any of you military hackers? I mean, if you are, you don't have to raise. You're not going to raise your hand. <laughs> but we know who you are. You look like a freaking blockhead. It's fine. You know, like, you have a better haircut. We're shaggy. I get it. <laughs> but, but there's nothing about that that fits a pen tester or an AppSec person or somebody who does code review or even somebody who does exploit development. None of that fits. All right, security, well, what's security? A state from being free of danger or threat. Cool. A private police force. Are you the private police force? You have to think about those words. That makes a difference. Words actually make a difference. They may not to us, but they do. Three, a thing deposited or pledged is a guarantee of fulfillment, OK, like a bond, or a certificate of assisting credit. I don't really know if we do any of those things. What we're trying to do is, number one, inspire a state of being free from danger or threat. We're trying to be the ones doing that, right? If you're a pen tester, and you say you're an attacker, you're full of shit. Attackers have malicious intent. So if you're a pen tester, you can't have malicious intent. You also have to connect with the fact that you're doing this to make a final report that gives people recommendations on how to get better. Right? That's what we do in the testing world. That's what we do a lot of times when we're finding bugs when we're looking for issues. We're not doing it just for the sake of finding it and doing it and then just trouncing someone, laughing at them as they go out of business. I mean, that's not a very profitable model. I mean, I guess the NSA has that model, but you know, they're different, right? But most of us don't really operate that way. Most of us are doing it with the good intentions, and rightfully so, of making places more secure. Now, guess what? Defense. Defense, the action of defending or resisting attack, right? Or the case being presented by behalf of the party being accused of suit in a lawsuit, or being accused or sued by a pen tester, right? Because they think they're an attacker. Or one or more defendants in a council, right? You're the council who protects your company. You're defending it. But do you guys see where I'm going that the offensive security people who have been polarized into being the offensive group and the defensive group have the same exact common goal? Yeah or no? And uh, tell me I'm wrong, please, because I need to know that. If you don't agree, tell me why. Anyone? OK. We have common goals. Right? We have a common goal of fixing the enterprise. We have a common goal of protecting the person, the people, our grandmother, whoever else. And we need to assess what that common goal is and figure out how do we all get to that common goal. I may be better at breaking into a building or exploiting something than somebody else who's better at AppSec, than somebody else who's better at building and designing firewalls, or architecture, or IDS, or making things, or looking at logs, or building servers, or building hardwares, but all of us have the same exact common goal. Sometimes that common goal is just make money. But I don't believe that in the heart of everybody in this room that you're here just to make money. Otherwise, you wouldn't have spent your time today to go to a conference. I mean, maybe you would have just to get the day off of work. But I've done that plenty of times. But I think we need to know that we have a common goal and that all of us can benefit by 
pushing forward to that goal and stopping the bitching of who does what or offense is harder, defense is harder, I have more passion, you have more passion, my penis is bigger, you know, whatever, right? We need to, we need to cut that bullshit out because it's hurting us. Our industry grows every single year and it's growing leaps and bounds. We have a conference at least every single day of the week worldwide. Do you guys know that? Every single day or more, we have a security conference. I mean, it's the worst stitch and bitch ever. We've never created anything by stitching, but we're bitching a whole lot. So we need to get our common goals together. We need to understand that language is a thing. You know that somebody did a study recently saying that over the course of a day, you'll hear upwards of 15 different languages. No matter where you are, that could be coding, that could be phone, that could be messaging, that could be dialects, it could be different root languages. But we hear 15 different ones, and the problem that starts to become is that everybody is starting to say the same thing, but people aren't doing translation well. We're not learning the other language well. And we need to assess in what language is going on and figure out how do we bridge the gap. Do I need to have somebody that's a good translator? Can I learn about the way that they speak or what that language is in order to try and figure out what our common goal is together so then we can just move past this instead of letting language be our barrier? Right? Find your spirit animal. I don't know where Trey is, but Trey made me laugh terribly when he said that Dave Marcus was a spirit animal. Dave's a big dude. And I don't know if I mess with Dave very much, but I like to try to. But within this, I mean, there's such a breadth of spirit animals that you can follow to try and see how that transition gets made, right? You have people like Dan Gear, who is one of the most eloquent speakers in security I've ever heard in my life. But if you don't know how to follow someone like that because of how smart that dude is, like, he's not going to be your spirit animal. You're going to get lost. You probably have to go to an idiot like me and then, like, work your way up, right? You have people like Robert. You have people like Corman or Gene Kim or, you know, Marcus Hellman or, or Kelly Mista or Dave or Wendy or Bill. I mean, there's, there's these little spirit animals everywhere, and they sit on stage to try and say, hey, this is how I communicate about things. And you're like, yeah, I like that talk, and they resonate with you. And try and identify what in that language pattern is different than these other people. And I think what you'll find out is that even though we all have different delivery, we're all part of the same goal. We're all just trying to move the damn ball forward and playing Sisyphus and having that motherfucker roll back over us at the end of the day. And we're like, oh, come on, roll it up the hill again. Right? And I'm not going to stop. I, I, I might be bitter, but I'm not going to stop trying to do that. And I think all of us in our enterprises and all of us when we're doing our job need to be really cognizant of the language of the people that we're working with and the people that we're trying to peer with and figure out how do we get commonality, how do we get language figured out. You know, if you've got to offer them a disclaimer and be like, yo, I'm from the East Coast, I swear, and say this shit, and then they're like, hey, I'm, you know, from the South, we're really polite, we say yes, ma'am, no, sir, and you're like, okay, I can... Try and turn this stuff down, but like, don't hate me when I do it. It's like, I'm just not really good at changing, but like, if, if it's something that offends you, let's like address it really quick and move on so that we don't have that be our stopping point. Be the change. We can't tell other people to change, as I say that, telling you to change. <laughs> Fucking idiot. <laughs> kick. <laughs> so don't just kick people's puppies. Don't just punch babies in the face and take their candy, right? Don't ever, 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 ever say it's the user's fault. You can't say that. You can't say that. I, I got so, I don't know if I got in trouble or just raised or whatever else when Marcus and Alex Hutton and I were doing this like, I don't know, panel thing at InfoSec World. And we were extra ratchety that day and kind of like angry. And it was just a shitty day to have all three of us there. And people were making comments and stuff. And, and as we were talking about what you should be focusing on in your InfoSec program and where and why and those things, um, you know, you always have like the class joker people, which they're great. That's what I was. I appreciate those people a ton, 
right? They give you a different view on things. But this lady, when we're walking up, she walked up, asked a question. Before she asked a question, she needed to get a little crowd behind her, which I'm like, good, get it. Um, and what she did to do that was go, you know, uh, yeah, you know, we would be a whole lot better off in security if the users didn't exist. And everybody's like, oh, yeah, clapping and all that stuff. And I got so pissed off. I, like, lost it, got mad. And so, like, Alex and Marcus both look at me, and I'm like, no, you can't. I'm taking this. <laughs> and they're like, uh, and, like, you can, when Marcus and Alex, like, do one of these, you know shit's bad. So I just looked at her, and I was like, oh, I got a question for you. I was like, I'm going to address whatever we're talking about, but I have a question for you right off the bat. She goes, yeah. I go, do you have kids? And then the bewildered look came on her face in front of all these people. <laughs> came on her face. I'm terrible. <laughs> um, so she just looked bewildered. And she was like, what? And I was like, do you have children? She said, yeah. And I'm like, when your kids were learning how to walk and they'd fall over, like, did you take time out of your day to stop and laugh at them? and be like, ha you can't even walk. What <laughs> <laughs> is wrong with you? Like, get, whatever, get your own dinner. Right? Like, is that, is that how you treated your kids? Is that how you are as an educator? And she just did one of the old <laughs> boop, and like sat back down. And it forced us into this horrid tirade of how these communication things around us exist and how a lot of this is us just not taking care of the people around us and why we need to start changing our strategies around that and that every single time the words that are spoke, I mean, it, to me, as controversial as it could be, I mean, that's the reason that people conflict in religion. That's the reason that people conflict in race or in sexuality or anything else because we keep it alive with our language. We keep the segregation there. Oh, you're a user, I'm not a user. Bullshit, you use a computer, you're a user. So talk shit about the users, but you're saying that you do dumb shit too. You're a user, right? And, and we need to start bridging the gap to that. We need to say, look, all right, they fall down all over the place. Like, how can we make it better? Ask them. Well, surprisingly enough, if you ask people questions, they give you answers. You don't have to just assume that you're smarter than them and that you know what's best for them and then get horribly pissed when they click the link. Oh my God, they clicked the link. I told them five times not to click the link. Well, maybe you weren't speaking their language and to them all they heard was <laughs> computer. And you were like, <laughs> I don't know, it was clicking super fun. Fuck that, I'm clicking links, <laughs> right? Like that, that's where they were going with it and they just don't care about your crazy gobbledygook language and then you're mad and you're like, we gotta train them again, bop, 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 computer. And they're like, fucking nope, clicking links, <laughs> right? Like, and then at that point we're like, fuck this, some people are gonna click links forever. I need to go buy the APT 5000. Cause that shit will stop people even though they click a link. That's just dumb, right? We've just totally given up on our education process and hope to God that we could get into the, you know, the, the realm of, well, people are going to do dumb stuff and we have to protect them because that's what we do. And then if they come and ask us questions, oh, don't worry, we have you protected. And then we bitch and scream because our whole network has stuff all over it. And we're like, God, the users are killing me. <laughs> right? I see that as our fault, not their fault. I see it as our fault squarely. And I think that we need to understand that about our languages. All right, lastly, enroll the world around you. You know how many times, I mean, so my, my experience is a lot on the testing side. I've been in defense before for eight, 10 years. I ran networks at Sprint all over the world. I ran uh, law firms networks. You know, I've worked in auditing. I've worked in whatever class you want to put me in, offense, defense, gay, straight. I've been all that shit. I have, I mean, because cool, it's fun to try it twice. Um, but by the second time, you know that you don't like that. Um, first time, it just may have been a bad time. Like, you may have just had bad whatever, and maybe you dig it next time. Um, but I figured two in a row, and that's plenty. 
but enroll the world around you in a way that makes sense. You know, if, if you're really into web app stuff, show somebody who's never seen it. Try and imbue them with the same amount of passion that you have. Show them why it's fun or why it's cool or why you get, you know, your little tech boner from it or, <laughs> you know, whatever, right? Like, like, try and share that with them. You know, I, I think some of the most successful jobs that I've ever feel, I ever feel like I had success on were some like, Gates and I are out doing a physical assessment as part of a red team job, and we're like, you know what, instead of being super sneaky this time, we're gonna take the executive with us. And we're gonna, hand, we're gonna confuse the shit out of him in the beginning. We're gonna hand him the number seven in a, in a plastic hotel key, and then we're gonna be like, okay, you're part of our team today, and we're gonna go break into your building. And they're just like, I don't know what the hell's going on. And you're like, okay, cool. And you start working them through it. And they're the ones opening the doors. And they're the ones pointing out the cameras. And as you're talking to them, you're educating them by giving them an experience. And they start getting fired up by that experience. They feel like they're part of that team. They've cross-trained and started to get some of those pieces of exercise that they always needed to put together the dots. Right? There's a lot of really amazing, amazing folks in the defense world. And when I've sat with them and they've... And I'm just like, show me what's cool that you're doing. I'm blown away. I had no idea half that shit ever existed. Now, granted, I'm thinking the whole time, like, hmm, how do I attack that now that I know it's there? But they're thinking the same exact thing when I'm showing them the attacks. And how much better it is to work together that way than just put the wall up between us and go, oh, got in this time. They're like, you're not going to get in next time. I'm like, oh, got in this time. And we play the cat and mouse game, and there's no progress, and everybody hates each other. Instead, we could be building wicked cool stuff. Whether that's a user that's challenging. I mean, you get a user that's challenging, find the head of the users that are challenging. Find the one that bitches the most. Find the doctor. Oh, man, doctor. Ugh. Find the doctor that can't remember a seven character password but can remember a hundred textbooks. <laughs> you know, sit them down. Be like, let me show you this, homie. <laughs> you and me will sit down, crack passwords together. Let's go make fun of other people's passwords. Come on. <laughs> right? Oh, I killed my wife six. What? <laughs> <laughs> he found that shit on a test. That was somebody's password. I was like, do, he's like, do we report this? And I'm like, <laughs> and I want nothing to do with that shit at all. Nothing to do with it. No, no, no. But it's so cool to watch that spark hit their eye. It makes them feel like a little kid again. It really does. I don't know how many of you get inspired anymore, but I get inspired by some weird shit now. And I also get inspired by stuff that I've just never seen. I think it's so neat, and it's so cool to me to watch somebody else just go off. Like, you're, they're in something that they love, that person will lay it all out on the line. Whether they're going too fast or too slow, or you can catch up or not catch up, man, being next to that kind of energy is the most valuable thing I've ever felt in my whole life, that kind of energy. And if we get to bring that kind of energy to people, and everything changes. Everything changes all at once. We're not just the person who's telling them to do something. We're like, that's my hangout cracking passwords, homie. Like, that's, every time somebody types a new password, they're like, we could crack that, right? I'm like, yeah, no. Oh, uh, no, you can't make that password? You know, like, that's so cool. Like, you, be, you, you become an enabler, right? We're like security drug dealers, right? Like, we want people to have a really fun experience with it and, like, get into it so then they start being our arms in the field. And the same thing with defense. I mean, God, please stop telling me that there's such a problem between defense and offense. Please stop telling me that, like, you wouldn't understand you don't do defense and the other people going, you wouldn't understand you don't do offense. Like, bullshit. We're working on the same system. How could I not understand it? We obviously have some common path in there. Like, show me your side, I'll show you mine. I mean, it, sometimes it can get like that. But um, just really do that, you know. I try and say this to everybody. We need to educate and not adjudicate. Right? We need to stop judging people. Oh, they're dumb. <laughs> really? Every time you point a finger at somebody, you have at least three fingers pointing back at you unless you had those things cut off. <laughs> 
because you were a liar or a thief. And probably both. So we, we need to remember that people aren't going to get it sometimes. Back in the day when all of this was building, a lot of people didn't get it. And they couldn't because it wasn't accessible. But now so many things are accessible and we have the ability to read through these languages and find some of these commonalities that it's really going to change things if all we do is put some effort towards it. All we do is put our heart into it instead of our mind or you know, whatever we think carries us forward as our ego or how tough we are or cool we are. If we could go and try and attach to the energy of people actually enjoying it, man, this would be a fun profession to be in again. Drop people knowledge. Don't just drop O'Day on them, right? You're dropping O'Day on them. You're doing it publicly. You're doing it because you're vain. Fuck you. That's my opinion. I don't care any other way. If you just want to go get the press, go get the press. Please don't say you're part of my industry. Because my industry here to help people. It's not here to just talk shit and kick their puppy. Most of all, we have to believe that we can fix this. I don't think that we believe we can fix this, and it's really easy stuff. It's easy stuff. It's us taking the time out of our day to not be right, to accept that we'd rather be happy than just be right, because a lot of times we pick being right to be safe. Instead of just throwing it out there and going, you know what? Show me. Maybe I don't know something that you're showing me. Maybe we don't need to have this Chinese wall up anymore. Maybe we can actually work together, being on totally different sides of things, and figure out a solution that's way greater than the sum of its parts. That's it. <laughs> and that is like the little spark that starts the fire that makes that passionate change, in my opinion. If this is a lemon market and we have an inappropriate and abortant amount of knowledge on a topic versus someone else and they need an indicator in order to feel comfortable with that, that maybe one of those indicators exists, but we need to help them find the right ones. Like if, it's a, if I'm a mechanic and you're buying a shitty used car, I'm not going to be able to tell you why you know, the rings are fucked up in the car. I'm going to be able to tell you, like, look, there's problems with the motor and, and trying to change that language piece. But I think that's such an awesome point. That we're, we're really all users, right? We're all the same. I mean, I don't know how many times I've been owned and had all sorts of random shit and clicked links. I mean, I was doing malware analysis and I, you know, completely hosed the box that I was on. And that, to me, getting up, right? So I think that's an awesome point. Anybody else? All right, well, thank you guys. Appreciate it.